Hello and welcome to Retro Breeze. You know, it kind of seems like I'm enjoying the Steam Deck more and more pretty much every day. It is a huge device and it has a lot of space on the front and back, which I think makes it absolutely perfect for customization with a skin. Fortunately, the awesome team at extremeskins.co.uk has sent me a couple to try out on my Steam Deck. While they did send me these skins for a review, my opinions are my own and they're not seeing the video before it goes live. By the way, Lee from Extreme Skins tells me that he's been playing R-Type, Bubble Bubble, and the original Mario Kart on the deck. I love R-Type, especially R-Type Command on PSP, which is a bit of a different take on the series. I'm not going to say that I cried when I played R-Type Final, but um, I at least got pretty close. Anyway, awesome taste in games, Lee. Oh yeah, he also says something about a game called Elden Ring, but I don't know anything about that. Anyway, extreme skins are great, because they make a lot of really high quality skins for a huge amount of devices, and they make them right here in the UK. I love a local business and a local product. Don't worry though, they do ship worldwide if you're interested. Extreme Skins offer a variety of really interesting colours and designs for a huge range of phones, laptops, and even headphones and stuff like that. Of course they also have Steam Deck skins, and also for Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, and Xbox as well. Even a hairdryer. You can also fully customise your selection down to each individual part and really make it your own. Here's a couple of pieces they sent me. First here's the red carbon. I hope that the camera picks up just how vibrant this colour is, it's so bright, and the shiny weaved texture looks really awesome. Here's the matte royal blue colour, which has a soft, almost kind of leathery texture, and the matte grey is the same as well. One offering that I really love from Extreme Skins is the matte black offering, because it matches the Steam Deck's original colour really, really closely. Like, really closely. I think this would be absolutely perfect if you wanted the protection from scratches and scuffs that comes with the skin, but you still want to keep the original deck styling. It's kind of a more reserved and low-key way to customise your deck. Personally though, I wanted to go with something a bit more adventurous for my deck, so I went with the brushed titanium skin with brushed aluminium accents. I did almost go for a wood grain instead, but I wasn't too sure. Let me know if you'd like to see a pirate-themed Steam Deck sometime. I might give it a go. Alright, I think I'm pretty much the best possible test case for a skin installation because I'm just terribly heavy-handed and clumsy. I struggle with screen protectors, really. Anyway, let's just go for it and see how we get on. First, I clean the deck with the included pre-injection swab. Alright. I started with the back and the cutouts for the screw holes made the alignment super duper easy. The side flaps were a little tougher because they're quite thin in some places, and I really didn't want to stretch them. The key is to line them up with the shiny lines on the deck shell, so there's plenty of points of reference to make sure that you've got everything in the right place. Overall though, it went on really really easily. The key was to apply a little bit of heat to each part to make sure that it stuck down properly. I did end up with a few little bubbles, but I was able to just peel the skin back, apply heat again, and push them down. Note though that what you don't want to do is to heat this up and then try and pull it or stretch it. If it's heated, you only want to push it, otherwise you're probably going to stretch the skin itself, which you do not want to do. Overall that went on really easily, and so far it looks so good. For the front, I strutted with the left hand side and lined up the D-pad, along with the lines on the edges again. You really can line the skin up perfectly with those shiny lines on the Steam Deck shell. I don't mean to keep repeating that, but it does make it so much better if you just follow those lines. Anyway, I just use a regular hairdryer to make the skin more malleable. Unfortunately, I don't have a Hello Kitty hairdryer, so this Remington had to do. But with this, I was able to bend it around the curves. Now, despite all the detail and the kind of weird shape of the deck face, this part was really painless to apply. I did ever so slightly stretch the part between the analog stick and the menu button up here. It was totally my fault because I was looking through the camera and not actually at the skin, and I had heated it and then I pulled on it. So again, don't pull or stretch the skin while it's heated and you shouldn't have any problems at all. It's really surprising how well the skin forms to the device with just a little bit of heat. I tended to get these little folds in the corner, but with some extra heat, I just pushed them out completely. I was surprised by how these folds just completely disappear with just a small press. At this point, I already knew this was a winner. The brushed titanium skin looks absolutely amazing. It has a kind of teeny tiny hint of bronze, which just kind of gives it a vintage feeling. Anyway, now it's time to add the brushed aluminium grips and the touchpads. I just simply plopped the touchpads on and then I added a little heat to ensure a better bond. For the grips, once again I just lined the edges up with the shiny lines on the Steam Deck and applied heat and pushed them down. If you look at this video, see how these pretty substantial folds just disappear with some heat. It really is amazing. And wow, just wow. 
I was absolutely stunned by this look for the Steam Deck. The two-toned brush metal effect is just incredible. And the last thing to do here was to add the little paddle stickers and the top edge, which was perfectly sized and perfectly cut and just fell into place with absolutely no issues on my end. And finally, just a quick clean, and here we are. Check out these close-ups. You can see the kind of diagonal diamond texture of the aluminium and the straight brushed effect on the titanium. And look at how precise this skin is manufactured to go on the Steam Deck. It really has to be seen to be believed. It came out so well, I am absolutely shocked. I always mess up applications like these and I have to get Mrs. Breeze to help me out, but not this time, it was so easy. The instructions from Extreme Skins are really well made, and everything just worked out perfectly. Of course, I'm also happy to report that the touchpads still work perfectly too, with absolutely no issues, but the texture of the aluminium skin feels absolutely amazing, and I way prefer it to the stock touchpad. In the hands as well, it feels absolutely amazing. The only thing I really wish, and this doesn't just apply to Extreme Skins, but all of the skins out there now, is that nobody's doing skins for the back of the grips, which, hint, 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 is a big thing that would make me buy a new skin. I guess I understand why they don't, because the shape is kind of weird and it might be difficult to apply, but still, if they were to do this, I would definitely buy and recommend more skins. Anyway, there we have it. I really, really love these skins from extremeskins.co.uk. I love how they look, I love how they feel, I love the selection available and how you can perfectly customize it to your very own tastes. They have a ton of variety, and best of all, they're made right here in the UK by a local family-owned business. Once again, I want to say thank you to Lee Extreme Skins for sending me these to try out. I really, really love them, and I highly recommend them to all my viewers, if you've got a Steam Deck or another device you might want to apply a skin to. And that's it for today, so thank you very much for watching Retro Breeze, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon.